What's your relationship with the rapper Mac? Mac is like my best friend. Mac is like my big brother. Um, I met Mac when I was in college, doing some uh, prison ministry, going in there to speak to the inmates, perform for the inmates. Shout out to my man Silky Slim. He helped to orchestrate that for me. And, um, and I met Mac for the first time behind bars. One of my favorite rappers ever. And I felt like I was looking at myself when I saw him. He reminded me of me so much, except he's in prison for a murder he didn't commit. So we've been cool ever since. Like I said, it's like my best friend. So you did the, you coordinated that purposely, trying to get in front of him, trying to perform in front of him? No, man. I coordinated it because I reached a point in my life where I was really trying to connect with my purpose, like why God had me on this earth, you know? And I realized that I could give back. I could give back with the knowledge that I have, the wisdom that I have, but also through the music I make. So when Silky Slim asked me, did I want to come into a prison and speak and perform for the inmates to inspire them, I said, yeah. Had no idea Mac was there. Right when we were pulling up to the gates, he was like, you know who you about to see, huh? I said, who? He said, your boy Mac. Man, you see the smile on my face? That's how I was when he told me that. Like, cause you know, I looked up to Mac as a little kid growing up in New Orleans. So, um, so that was that was a God moment right there. Like God orchestrated that relationship and you know, we yelling free meek and free this rapper and free that rapper, man. You know, no offense to any of that stuff, but we all need to be yelling free Mac. Cause this man has served eighteen years. 18 years for a murder that he did not commit. And the dude who did commit it confessed a long time ago. Why is he still in there? Because New Orleans, and uh, not New Orleans, but Louisiana in general, you know, we have the highest incarceration rate in the world. Feel me? And, and we got a lot of crooks and a lot of just scandalous politicians down there. So the DA who played a big role in Mac getting convicted, He's, he's currently facing about 300 years in jail for a bunch of scandals and a bunch of corruption. So it just goes to show you, man, like, you know, they just, at this point, they don't want to let Mac out early because it'll expose a lot of um, flaws that, you know, and a lot of cover-ups that's been going on. So they're afraid to let Mac out. But by the power of God and by the, you know, by, by, by man, look, by the time this interview come out, hopefully my man will be home because... God could do anything, you feel me? And if God chooses to keep Mac back there, then it's for a reason, you feel me? But nothing that man, especially especially crooked human beings with, you know, like like dirty, rotten hearts, they can't do nothing to hold my dog back. I would feel like, I mean, just with the, the way you just described everything, I would think with the, you know, the DA going, the former DA going through this, facing this 300 years or whatever it is yeah. he's facing, I would think that a lot of things could potentially be overturned or challenged. Yeah, man. Um, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. But uh, Mac is, Mac isn't a human being. You know, Mac is an angel. Like Mac is, he's literally immaculate. You know what I mean? Um, you know, he, he was born on 7-30-77, you know what I mean? He got three sevens in his, na in, in, his, in his birthday. Like, Mac is, he's immaculate. Like, he's not, he's not like the rest of us, you know what I'm saying? Um, so God knew that he could handle a circumstance like that. So that's the only reason why, you know, he's going through it. And I think that once he comes home, the amount of people he'll be able to bless with just his philosophies on life and, and just you know, his experience for what he's gone through is going to be amazing. Now, um, I don't know too much about uh, the appeal process that he's gone through or what he's done or hasn't done or parole or any of that stuff, but uh, um, just taking it back to the first time you actually met him, um, did you speak to him and, and uh, graze eyes with him before you actually performed or was it when you performed <coughs> or after you performed you... Man, I, I walked up to that man like a magnet. You know, as soon as I got uh, on the courtyard where, where all the prisoners were and I identified Mac, I walked straight over to him just as a fan. And what did I see? I saw a dude from New Orleans that's from the hood, that's super intelligent, 
that's tall, that's slim, that's left-handed, that's lyrical. And I said, wait, I'm looking at myself because everything I just described is me. All of this. So I feel like I'm looking at myself. The difference is he's in jail for a murder he didn't commit and I'm free on the streets. So I could be looking at myself if I was in that unfortunate circumstance. And me and Mac, we just, we just clicked up. So from day one, it was just a natural bond, a natural chemistry. Both our favorite rappers is Nas, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just crazy. So I don't have any blood brothers, you know? That's my, that's, that's my brother, though, for real. Did he know who you were at Mac, the time? Mac knew who I was, because although I didn't have a career for being a rapper, um, as a college student, I started to get a little buzz around town, you feel me? And I just got my, my first write-up in an actual publication. And it just so happens that this publication was something that they got behind bars. Oh, wow. So Mac had read a story on me. And, you know, he was as excited to meet me as I was with him. And it just, yeah. I love that dude, man. I love, I love Mac. Love him, love him, love him. Um, you know, I, I hurt somebody behind Mac, like for real. Like, he don't deserve nothing but the best, man. And I, uh, it's crazy, bro. So you probably ain't know this about me, but, uh, um, you know, I think that what that did was that opened the door for me to have a heart for people who are behind bars. You know what I mean? Uh, growing up, I didn't have any loved ones. I had friends who were behind bars, but no family members, right? So, you know, I was a teacher. So, um, ironically, some of the students I taught, they have like big buzzes as rappers and some of them have gotten locked up or served various amounts of jail time or even gotten killed like i'm sure you're familiar with the dude g money that's my former student man i was his teacher feel me did not know that i was his teacher bro i talked to him on facetime two days before he got killed man like and he was telling me he, he still called me mr augustine you feel me that's how it was and, mm. and, and he looked up to me and he, he just wanted to come down to New Orleans and get with me because stuff just wasn't right, and he was kind of elaborating on FaceTime. And before I had time to get with him, uh, I had a show in Memphis that weekend. And before I could get back home to meet with him on Monday, he got killed, you know. And I feel, I feel bad. I feel guilty partially because I feel like, dang, whenever you know that somebody really needs you right then and there, sometimes even if it's inconvenient for you, you got to do what's necessary to get with them and give them your time or attention, you know. I hate that I couldn't, hate that I couldn't, you know, like, just come back on Monday and meet with my dude. Mm. Feel me? So, yeah. But the uh, it's crazy, man. So, you know, he got another uh, another one of my students who I taught, uh, Fred O'Bang. I don't know if you're familiar with Fred O'Bang, but that was G Money's um, rapping partner. So he locked up right now, you know what I mean? And uh, that's my former student. And, you know, I talk to him frequently. Um, and it's just one of them things where I understand, I understand because of my relationship with Mac, I understand what they go through back there, you know what I mean? And I understand how they need people, man. They need people who are positive, who are waiting for them to get home. Not, you know, this is my message to, to Fredo. This is my message to you, brother. You know I love you, and when I say I can't wait for you to get home, it's not so you could go back to being caught up in this cycle of negativity. It's so you could be the person God called you to be, bro. You feel me? And so you could use that same talent that you got, but for the right reasons. You understand me? And that's what I'm excited about. So I'm like, I'm here. I'm here for whatever you need when it comes to that type of stuff. But as far as just that, like, yeah, come home so you could get back caught up in that life. Nah, man, not at all, you know? So everybody behind bars needs those people who are rooting for them to come home to make a change for the better. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to act like I'm here to save everybody's life or anything like that. You know, I'm a human being, but I know that I've been put in certain people's lives for a reason, you know? It's no coincidence that uh, I taught Sherwood Marty, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. I taught him. It's no coincidence that I taught G Money. It's no coincidence that I met Mac. You feel me? One of my favorite rappers ever. It's no coincidence that I met him, you know, um, uh, years ago. It's no coincidence that I taught Fred O'Bang, you know. It's no coincidence that I taught um, my man T.E.C., you know what I mean? Like, 
<coughs> or that he know me from that. I don't think he was in my class, but he went to the school, you know. Um, it's no coincidence, man. It's no coincidence. So if God put me in, 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 in your life, just know that I really care about you, and I'm trying to figure out why he put me in your life. He, he ain't put me in your life because I need anything from you. You know, I'm self-sufficient, so, you know, that's a blessing of being independent. But, you know, he put me in Lil' Soldier Slim life for a reason, you know. He put me in Young Juvie life for a reason, in T.Y. life for a reason, you know. Um, there's a, yeah, there, there's a reason. Some of it I haven't figured out yet, but, you know, these are all people I got relationships with, and I got mad love for, man. Mad love for, you know. Um, and so. I've had a chance to interview several of those people you just well, named. For real? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I be watching. I, I, let me not act like I don't know. No, I know that's my little home. It's like, trust me, I keep up with them, man. I, I, I'm I, rooting for them as people, you know what I mean? As just people. So as an artist, you know, like, hey, we all on the same hustle, same grind. But just as people, man, I just want to see all of them win, you know? My man Turk, you dig? Turk came home from jail. Me and Turk... Who would ever thought? I used to want to be a hot boy. I got a song on the album called Want to Be a Hot Boy. So you want to be a hot boy, riding in the drop boy. Got your nine million cock boy. Make a lot of money in your shop boy. But when them killers running in, is you really going to pop boy? I was drastically influenced by the hot boys. Now me and Turk got a great relationship. Me and Juvie, you know what I'm saying? That's big bro. Like, like this stuff ain't coincidence. So that's the part where I'm trying to always figure out, like, all right, what role am I supposed to play in these people's lives? Because I don't need anything from them. That's the thing. As rappers, people always want something from us. You know what I mean? Even other artists, it's all about, like, and I'm guilty of that early in my career. I would only try to uh, befriend someone so I could get a feature from them. And what I tell people is, look, let's actually form a relationship. Because when you have a relationship with another artist, a real friendship, there's no time limit on when you can do music with them. There's no expiration date on that. You my dog? Man, we could do that today or we could do it next year. Ain't no rush, partner. Feel me? So, yeah. Now, um, as far as Mac is concerned, uh, how often do you communicate with him these days? I talk to Mac every day. He calls me from prison every single day. Um, he called me today. I had a concert. I didn't have my phone on me. Um, you know, he called me yesterday. No, two days ago, I had a concert in Philly. I was walking on stage in 10 minutes. I had my phone on me still, so I answered, and I talked to him all the way up until I went on stage, you know, so we talk all the time. How's his mind state these days? Immaculate. Mac isn't tarnished or <coughs> bitter or negative or any of that stuff. Um, and it's almost... It's almost like superhuman, you know, like how he is, man. So that's why I say I, I look up to that man. I look up to that man. That man, man is an angel, bro. Mac is not a human being. Like, he not. It's crazy. Is there any advice to somebody watching this right now? Maybe they have a friend, okay, um, that's doing time. And it's a similar situation. I don't want to say it's the same exact situation, but it's similar it it's, can easily be proven that this person is not supposed to be incarcerated, but however corrupt the system is, for wherever they're at, that person is still doing time. Is there any advice to somebody that has a close, similar to a relationship you have with Matt, is there any, close, any, any advice that could be said to a person like that? To the one behind bars or to the no, friend? To, to the friend that has somebody behind bars that's oh, innocent. Oh, yes, yes, we yes, in yeah. So number one, do everything you can on the outside to actually get them to come home. So if you need to look to get a private investigator, if you need to look to get them the best legal counsel that you can get them, do all that stuff. Leave no stone unturned if you know they're innocent. Feel me? If you know they're innocent, man, you need to fight and you need to do everything you can think of, literally. Click up with whoever you need to because y'all need to get them home, man. There's too many innocent people that's locked up. Way too many, you dig? The other thing you can do as a friend is, man, keep their spirits high, man. Feel them, inject them with positivity. Pray for them, you know? Let them know, man. Talk to God about your friend, you know? My grandma don't know who Mac is, but my grandma always asking me, how Mac doing? You know, just because I've talked to her about the situation. Feel me? 
My grandma prayers go a long way. They got me here in this chair today. My grandma praying for Mac too, you feel me? Mm. So do all that. I know you can't really speak for Mac, but you know, Mac is Mac and he's, we're not doing the interview with him, we're doing the interview with you. But do you think if there was a message he could say uh, to people that might be thinking about him or anything, uh, is there anything that would be said? Sure. Um, Mac would tell, Mac would tell everyone how much he appreciates them, how much he's humbled by their support. Mac would also say that, you know, he's gone through this process and he's grown from this process. Although he's totally innocent, he's grown from this process because there were things that he wasn't pleased with about his own lifestyle at that time. And he felt like prison slowed him down. You know, prison made it to where he was able to reflect and grow as a man. So, you know, he would thank everyone and he would always just like, Mac just wants to see you live your best life. You feel me? And when you realize, wait, why does man care about me so much? I'm not the one locked up for something I didn't do. That's when I'm just like, yeah, this, this dude a real life angel, man. Like for real.